God in You, written and published by God Daily News. Introduction. Isn't it a wonder the concept of God in You, a spiritual tenet that carries profound implications for your understanding of both self and divinity? This exploration, rooted in biblical references, will guide you through the fascinating labyrinth of this belief. The Bible, Old and New Testament alike, abounds with teachings that hint at a divine presence within us. Consider the words of Jesus in Luke 17:21, The kingdom of God is within you, a passage that spurs countless interpretations and insights. Yet what does it truly mean to have God within? How does this inner divinity influence your life, your choices, your relationship with yourself and others? These are the questions we'll journey through as we unravel this spiritual enigma that promises to transform not just your perception, but your very existence. Chapter 1. Understanding God in You To truly comprehend the concept of God in you, you must delve into the spiritual depth of scriptural references and theological interpretations. This profound idea is rooted in the notion of divine indwelling, the belief that God, in essence, resides within the human soul. In your quest for understanding, you'll find crucial references in the Bible, particularly in the New Testament. John 14.20 asserts, At that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. This passage expresses the intimate relationship between God and man, a unity that signifies God's presence within us. However, the concept isn't merely about divine presence. It's tied to action and responsibility. You're called to live your life reflecting God's love, serving and respecting others as expressions of God within you. This understanding should inspire selfless action, illuminating the path to spiritual growth and fulfillment. Critically, God in you isn't just theological, it's experiential. It's a claim that challenges you to look inward, to experience the divine within your own consciousness. This isn't about intellectual understanding alone. It's about personal transformative experience. Chapter 2. Biblical Concept of God Within Delving into the Bible, you'll find a multitude of passages that elaborate on the concept of God within, providing a rich tapestry of insight and wisdom. This concept isn't an abstract idea, but a tangible reality that permeates every aspect of your life, urging you towards acts of compassion, empathy, and selfless service. In the New Testament, Paul's letter to the Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 3.16 states, Do you not know that you're God's temple and that God's Spirit dwells in you? Here, Paul highlights the divine presence within each believer, signifying the intimate relationship between God and you. He's not distant or remote, but rather a part of your very essence. Similarly, in the book of John, John 14, 20, Jesus tells his disciples, On that day you'll realize that I'm in my Father, and you're in me, and I'm in you. Through these words, Jesus underscores the interconnectedness of the divine and human, reinforcing the idea that God's presence isn't just around you, but within you. Understanding the God within concept can significantly influence your interactions with others. As you recognize the divine in yourself, you'll naturally start seeing it in others too. This perception encourages a spirit of love, kindness and service, essentially transforming your worldview. Therefore, the biblical concept of God within acts as an empowering tool, inspiring you to live a life centered on love and service, reflecting God's character in your actions. Chapter 3. Old Testament References Exploring the Old Testament, you'll encounter profound references to the God within concept, offering a deeper understanding of this divine presence. For instance, in Exodus 3.14, God reveals himself to Moses as I am who I am, indicating a divine presence within us. This self-referential name of God emphasizes his self-existence, omnipresence, and the potential of his presence within humanity. In Psalm 139.13-14, the psalmist acknowledges God's intimate knowledge and involvement in our creation, 
You knit me together in my mother's womb. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. This passage affirms the profound belief that God isn't only our creator, but is intricately involved in our lives, residing within us. Analyzing the book of Jeremiah, you'll find another compelling reference in 3133. I will put my law within them, and I'll write it on their hearts. This prophecy highlights the shift from an external law to an internal one, indicating God's dwelling within us. In Ezekiel 36.26, God promises a new heart and a new spirit within us, replacing our heart of stone. This transformational promise signifies God's intent to dwell within us, guiding our actions and decisions. In essence, the Old Testament is replete with references to the God within concept, affirming God's intimate connection with humanity. These references offer you an insightful understanding of the divine presence within us, fostering an environment of service and compassion for others. Chapter 4 New Testament Insight Shifting our focus to the New Testament, we uncover further evidence of the God within concept, deepening our understanding of this divine relationship. The New Testament, filled with the teachings of Jesus Christ and the Apostles, provides abundant insights into this idea. When Jesus spoke of the Holy Spirit in John 14.17, He said, The Spirit of Truth lives with you and will be in you. Here Christ outlines a transformative relationship, a divine presence within, guiding and enlightening. This isn't a fleeting visitation, but a permanent residence a testament to God's commitment to you. Paul expands on this in his letter to the Corinthians. He writes, Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit, who's in you, whom you have received from God? 1 Corinthians 6.19 Paul is explicit in his message. God resides within you. Thus you're called to honor this temple, serving others as Christ served, with love, humility, and compassion. Additionally, in Galatians 2.20, Paul declares, It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. This affirms the transformative power of God's presence within us. It's not a mere coexistence, it's a transformation. You aren't left the same. Chapter 5, Jesus' Teachings on Inner Divinity Building on the affirmations from the New Testament, Jesus himself offered profound teachings on the concept of inner divinity, shedding light on this transformative relationship with the divine. His teachings, while presented in parables and metaphors, deeply underscored the possibility of experiencing divine essence within oneself. You might recall his words in Luke 17.21, where he declares, The kingdom of God is within you. Here, Jesus doesn't merely suggest, but asserts the presence of the divine in every individual. You're not separate from God, but bear His likeness within, a critical realization that can revolutionize your life and service to others. Further, in John 14, 20, Jesus foretells, On that day you'll realize that I'm in my Father, and you're in me, and I'm in you. This intricate relationship reveals a mystic unity where you aren't just connected with the divine, but interwoven in an intimate, indivisible bond. This teaching invites you to seek God not just externally, but internally, in the depths of your soul. In Matthew 5.16, Jesus guides, Let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. This commandment implies the divine within you isn't dormant, but active, capable of illuminating the world, your actions, then, become the medium through which this inner divinity manifests, serving as testament to God's presence. Chapter 6. The Holy Spirit in Us Diving into the profound nature of inner divinity, it's essential to consider the role of the Holy Spirit. Often depicted as God's presence within us, the Holy Spirit guides, inspires, and transforms us from within. This divine entity isn't merely an abstract concept or distant deity, but an active and dynamic aspect of your being. It's important to recognize the Holy Spirit's purpose in our lives. This spirit isn't a passive bystander, but a catalyst for spiritual growth. 
You're equipped with this divine presence to bear the fruits of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. It's the Holy Spirit that brings these qualities to fruition in your life. Your relationship with the Holy Spirit is a two-way interaction. You mustn't only accept the Spirit, but also lean into its guidance to effect change. It's through your openness and receptivity that you allow the Spirit to work in you, transforming you into the image of Christ. The Holy Spirit also plays a pivotal role in your service to others. As the Spirit works in you, you're enabled to extend God's love to those around you. You're empowered to serve with compassion, understanding, and humility, reflecting the nature of Christ in your interactions. Chapter 7. Paul's Letters and Inner God Have you ever wondered how Paul's letters in the New Testament illuminate the concept of the inner God? Paul's epistles offer a profound exploration of this topic particularly in his letters to the Corinthians and Galatians. Through his words, you can discern a message of inner divinity. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 3.16, Do you not know that you're God's temple and that God's Spirit dwells in you? He reaffirms this in 2 Corinthians 6.16, where he asserts, For we're the temple of the living God. In these passages, Paul suggests that God's Spirit, or inner God, resides within each believer. Paul's letter to the Galatians further elaborates on the concept of the inner God. In Galatians 2.20 he proclaims, It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Here Paul points to an intimate, personal relationship with the divine, a transformative experience where the believer's selfhood is infused with the presence of Christ. By scrutinizing these letters, you can understand Paul's perspective on the inner God as an indwelling presence, an inner light guiding actions and decisions. This view encourages you to cultivate inner spirituality, fostering a deeper connection with the divine. It's not just about external acts of service, but also nurturing the God within you. Paul's letters, therefore, serve as a powerful reminder that service to others is an external manifestation of an internal divine principle. It's about recognizing and honoring the God within, which in turn fuels your desire to serve others. Chapter 8. Wise Words from Proverbs Turning now to the book of Proverbs, you'll find a multitude of wise sayings that echo the concept of the inner God further emphasizing the importance of internal spirituality. These proverbs, steeped in wisdom, serve as a guide to developing and nurturing the divine within you. Proverbs 4.23, for instance, advises, Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. This verse isn't merely advocating for emotional protection. It's a call to safeguard your inner self, that divine spark, Understanding that your actions, thoughts, and interactions with others are influenced by the state of your inner God. One can't overlook Proverbs 16.32 that states, Better a patient person than a warrior, one with self-control than one who takes a city. This proverb is a testament to the significance of inner strength and discipline. It advocates for patience and self-control, virtues that manifest when you're in tune with your inner God. The power of words is underlined in Proverbs 18.21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruits. This verse underscores the immense power and influence your words can have, nudging you towards harnessing this power responsibly, as befits a carrier of the divine. In essence, Proverbs offers you a roadmap to unearthing and nurturing the God within you. By embracing its teachings, you're not just gaining wisdom, but also deepening your spiritual connection and understanding of the divine that resides within you. Chapter 9, The God Within in Psalms In the expressive verses of Psalms, you'll find a wealth of insights into the omnipresence of God, especially as it pertains to the divine within us. Psalms, a book of songs and poetry, beautifully illustrates how the Creator's Spirit inhabits us, guiding and inspiring our actions. Consider, for instance, Psalm 139, where it's stated, 
You hem me in, behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Here the psalmist recognizes that God's omnipresence isn't an abstract concept, but an intimate reality that shapes our daily lives. He's not a distant entity, but a constant companion intertwined with our being. Let's also delve into Psalm 16.8. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he's at my right hand, I'll not be shaken. Here, the psalmist's relationship with God is presented as a conscious choice. God's presence within us isn't automatic. It requires our recognition and acceptance. These verses elucidate the concept of God within us, showing how this divine presence can guide, protect, and strengthen us. They challenge you to acknowledge God's presence in your life and to yield to His guidance. To serve others effectively, it's crucial to understand and live out this truth. God within us empowers us to act with wisdom, compassion, and love. It's a divine strength that enables us to contribute positively to the world around us. In essence, Psalms invites you to experience God's omnipresence, not as a theological concept, but as a lived reality, shaping your interactions and influencing your service to others. Chapter 10. The God in You in Genesis Delving into the book of Genesis, you'll discover profound insights into the concept of God in you. Genesis, as the inaugural book of the Bible, sets the foundational understanding of man's relationship with God. It illustrates how God's Spirit breathes life into mankind, thus establishing the divine imprint within us. In Genesis 1.27 it's written, So God created mankind in His own image. In the image of God He created them, male and female He created them. This passage indicates that there's a part of God's essence within you, which is a significant factor in your capability to serve others effectively. You're not just a physical being, you're suffused with divine spirit, empowering you to mirror God's love and compassion. Moreover, Genesis 2.7 states, Then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. This breath of life is the divine spark that animates you, guiding your actions and decisions in service to others. It's a testament to the God in you, revealing your potential for benevolence and kindness. Understanding God in you from Genesis' perspective reinforces your inherent worth and capacity for good. It encourages you to embrace your divine lineage, inspiring you to live a life of service, just as Jesus did. In the grand scheme of things, recognizing the God in you is a crucial step towards fulfilling your purpose of serving others with love and humility. Chapter 11. The Role of Faith Your faith, much like a guiding compass, plays a pivotal role in recognizing and nurturing the God within you. It's the lens through which you perceive the divine presence, the tether that binds you to the spiritual realm, and the conduit through which God's grace flows. Faith isn't simply a passive acceptance of God's existence, but an active engagement with His Word and will. Faith is a dynamic, evolving force that requires cultivation. According to Hebrews 11.1, 1, Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. This means that faith requires you to believe in what you can't see, to trust in God's plan even when the path ahead is unclear. It's not a blind leap into the darkness, but a confident step towards a light only your spiritual eyes can see. To nurture your faith, immerse yourself in Scripture. The Bible serves as a roadmap guiding you on how to live a life pleasing to God. Romans 10.17 reminds us that faith comes from hearing and hearing through the Word of Christ. Therefore, consistent engagement with the Bible strengthens your faith. Moreover, faith propels you towards service. It's faith that motivates you to love your neighbor, to show compassion and kindness, to serve others as Christ served us. Remember, James 2.26 states that faith apart from works is dead. Therefore, faith isn't an abstract concept, but a living, breathing, actionable belief that transforms you and the world around you. Chapter 12 Accepting God's Presence 
Recognizing and embracing the omnipresence of God is a transformative step on your spiritual journey. It's more than just a cognitive acceptance. It involves a heart-level conviction, a soul-deep understanding. This process isn't a one-time event, but a continual conscious commitment to remain in God's presence. Accepting God's presence can be challenging, especially when life's storms rage and it seems he's silent. However, recall the biblical story of Elijah in 1 Kings 19.11-12. Elijah discovered that God wasn't in the earthquake, wind, or fire, but in a gentle whisper. This story signifies how God's presence isn't always manifested in overpowering displays, but in subtle, quiet moments. Acceptance of God's presence also necessitates humility. It calls for the acknowledgement that you're not the center of the universe, but a part of a grander cosmic plan. It's recognizing that, in the words of John the Baptist, He must increase, but I must decrease. John 3.30 Moreover, accepting God's presence also involves the heart's transformation. As Ezekiel states, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. Ezekiel 36.26 It's about allowing God to work in you, to change you, and to fulfill His purpose through you. Chapter 13. Nurturing the Divine Within In the pursuit of spiritual growth, nurturing the divine within becomes an essential practice, inviting you to cultivate a deeper connection with God's Spirit that resides in your heart. It's not merely about acknowledging God's presence, but actively participating in His divine nature through your thoughts and actions. The Bible, in 2 Peter 1.4, alludes to this idea, stating that we may participate in the divine nature. This participatory relationship suggests an ongoing dynamic interaction with God's Spirit. It's not a one-time event, but a constant conscious cultivation of godliness in your life. Nurturing the divine within isn't a passive process. It requires you to engage actively in spiritual disciplines such as prayer, meditation, studying scripture, and serving others. These practices help you align with God's will, thereby enabling you to reflect His love and compassion. Prayer, for instance, isn't just a monologue but a dialogue that fosters a deeper relationship with God. Through prayer, you express your desires, concerns, and gratitude, and in turn, listen to God's guidance. Similarly, meditating on Scripture aids you to internalize God's words, transforming your mindset and behavior. Serving others, in particular, allows you to embody God's love and compassion in tangible ways. It's an outward expression of the divine within, reflecting God's heart in your interactions with others. In this journey of spiritual growth, remember, nurturing the divine within isn't about achieving perfection, but growing in God's grace. It's a continuous process of becoming more like God, embodying His love, and serving others with compassion. Chapter 14. Impact on Spiritual Growth As you cultivate the divine within, it's evident that this practice profoundly influences your spiritual growth. This process, akin to tending a spiritual garden, fosters deeper connections to God and invites an outpouring of divine love, which in turn shapes your spiritual maturation. The Bible in 1 Corinthians 3.6 echoes this dynamic. Here, Paul talks about planting and watering, but it's God who gives the growth. This suggests that nurturing the divine within you is a cooperative effort between you and God. You're tasked with the planting and watering, the consistent acts of prayer, meditation, and service, while the growth is God's work. This growth isn't mere expansion, it's transformation. It's about becoming more Christ-like in your thoughts, words, and deeds. Ephesians 4.15 This doesn't mean losing your individuality, but rather enriching it with divine qualities. Moreover, this growth impacts your ability to serve others. As you mature spiritually, you're better equipped to bear one another's burdens. Galatians 6.2 Your increased capacity for empathy, compassion and love, a result of your spiritual growth, makes you a more effective servant. Chapter 15 Living According to God in You 
Embracing the concept of God in you transforms how you navigate life, imbuing every thought, action, and decision with divine wisdom and guidance. This notion, deeply rooted in biblical teachings, serves as a guiding principle for those seeking to serve others, promoting not only personal growth, but also a commitment to the betterment of the global community. Living in accordance with God in you requires a conscious daily commitment. You're not merely adhering to a set of rules, but embodying divine love and compassion in every aspect of your existence. This involves seeing God's reflection in oneself and others, leading with empathy and acting with integrity, even when it's challenging. Understanding God in you also means recognizing your divine potential. You can't diminish or limit yourself because God, living within you, is limitless. Recognizing this can lead to an inner strength and resilience that will allow you to overcome obstacles and serve others more effectively. The Bible's teachings on God in you offer profound insights. For instance, 1 Corinthians 3.16 reminds us, Don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's Spirit dwells in your midst? This passage underscores the belief that we're not separate from God, but rather extensions of His divine presence. In essence, living according to God in you is a journey of self-discovery and service, marked by constant growth and a deepened understanding of your divine purpose. It's a transformative process that enriches your life and the lives of those you serve. Chapter 16 Personal Transformation Through Faith Through faith you will experience a profound personal transformation that reshapes your perceptions, attitudes and actions to align more closely with divine principles. This shift isn't just about changing your behaviors. It delves deeper, impacting your underlying thought processes, your innate values and the core of your being. As you imbibe these divine principles, you'll become more attuned to the needs of others, fostering a spirit of service. The Bible in Romans 12.2 encourages you not to conform to the patterns of this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. This implies an active, ongoing process. It's not a one-time event, but a journey of continuous growth and revelation spurred by faith. Your transformation also involves cultivating a heart of humility, as suggested in James 4.10, humble yourselves before the Lord, and He'll lift you up. Humility allows you to acknowledge your shortcomings, making room for God's transformative power to work within you. It's this divine influence that triggers a profound change in your character, values, and actions. Moreover, this transformation isn't for your benefit alone. As you develop a more Christ-like character, you'll be better equipped to serve others. You'll become a beacon of love, kindness, and grace qualities that are sorely needed in a world often characterized by selfishness and indifference. Chapter 17, The Power of Prayer In this journey of personal transformation, prayer serves as a potent tool that connects you directly with the divine, fostering deeper understanding and spiritual growth. As you kneel in humility, submitting your desires, fears, and aspirations to God, you're not only seeking divine intervention, but also developing a stronger bond with your Creator. Prayer is more than just a religious obligation. It's a profound spiritual experience that brings you closer to God and enhances your understanding of His divine purpose for you. When you pray, you're not just talking to God. You're also listening, opening up your heart to receive His wisdom and guidance. You're aligning your will with His, allowing His power to work through you and impact those around you. The power of prayer isn't just about asking for things. It's about surrendering your needs, acknowledging that there's a greater power at work beyond your understanding. It's about accepting that the answers to your prayers may not always come in the form you expect, but that they'll always be for your ultimate good. The Bible clearly highlights the power of prayer. In James 5.16 it says, Therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. These aren't just words. They're a divine promise, a testament to the transformative power of prayer. Chapter 18. Fostering Spiritual Connectivity 
Fostering spiritual connectivity demands a commitment to deep, personal introspection and a consistent effort to cultivate a dynamic relationship with God. This isn't a passive process. It's an active daily commitment that involves introspection and prayer, understanding and applying biblical teachings, and living a life that mirrors the love and kindness exhibited by Christ. To effectively foster this connection, you must first understand who you're in relation to God. You're not merely a spectator in the spiritual realm, but a participant. The Bible, in Ephesians 2.10, describes you as God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works. This means that within you, God has implanted a divine purpose that you're called to fulfill. Equally important is your commitment to prayer. Prayer isn't merely a monologue, but a dialogue and intimate conversation with God. In this exchange, you don't just present requests, but also listen for God's guidance. By doing so, you build a relationship that grows stronger over time. Next, the application of biblical teachings in your life serves as a roadmap for your spiritual journey. It's in the Bible that you'll find God's will for your life, and by adhering to these teachings, you align yourself more closely with Him. Lastly, serving others is a tangible expression of your spiritual connectivity. As you serve, you demonstrate God's love to others, fostering their own spiritual growth. Through this selfless act, you not only enrich your own spiritual connection, but also contribute to a larger communal spirituality. Chapter 19. The God in You and Altruism Drawing upon the concept of serving others, it's crucial to explore God in You as a catalyst for altruism, the selfless concern for the well-being of others. The embodiment of divine love within you can stir a deep sense of empathy and compassion, compelling you to prioritize the needs of others. This internal spiritual awakening can be a powerful driver for altruistic behaviors. The Bible in Ephesians 4.32 advocates for kindness, tender-heartedness, and forgiveness, reflecting the nature of God within us. It's not just about being good for the sake of goodness, but about being a living reflection of God's love. You're encouraged to be an agent of positive change, influencing others through your actions and attitudes. Jesus made it clear in Matthew 25:40 that serving others is tantamount to serving Him. This connection between God in you and altruism is profoundly significant. When you act out of selfless love, you're essentially mirroring the divine love within you. This isn't about seeking earthly rewards or recognition. It's about aligning your actions with the divine purpose. Your potential for altruistic behavior isn't limited or defined by external circumstances. It's rooted in your internal spirituality, the God in you. This divine spark can guide you towards altruism, even in the face of adversity. Chapter 20 Biblical Figures Embracing Inner God While you may find it challenging to connect with the God in you, biblical figures provide profound examples of embracing this divine inner presence. They didn't merely acknowledge the existence of a higher power, but accessed and utilized this divine essence within themselves to fulfill God's purpose. Let's examine Moses, a humble shepherd who became the liberator of the Israelites. Moses' inner God was most visible when he confronted Pharaoh, an act requiring immense courage. His faith in his inner divine presence allowed him to perform miracles and lead a nation. Similarly, David, the shepherd boy turned king, embraced his inner God to defeat Goliath. He didn't rely on physical strength, but on the divine power within him. His victory over Goliath was less about his prowess and more about the manifestation of inner God. Lastly, consider Paul, transformed from a persecutor of Christians to one of the most influential apostles. Paul's transformation was a direct result of recognizing and embracing the God within him. It was this inner divinity that guided his missionary work, shaping the early Christian church. These biblical figures are reminders that you too have an inner God waiting to be acknowledged and manifested. It's not about being perfect, but about recognizing and utilizing this divine spark within you. Chapter 21. Parables. Illustrating God in You. To better understand the concept of God in you, 
let's delve into some parables that effectively illustrate this profound spiritual truth. One such parable is the parable of the mustard seed found in Matthew 13, 31, 32. This parable underscores the idea that even a small amount of faith, akin to a mustard seed, can grow into something large and influential. This growth is similar to the potential within you to cultivate the godly qualities that reside in your spirit. Another significant parable is the parable of the talents in Matthew 25, 14-30. It demonstrates how God entrusts each of us with talents and abilities. The expectation is that you'll cultivate and multiply these talents, not bury them. This parable reminds you of the God-given gifts within you that you're meant to bring forth and share with the world. Parable of the Leaven in Luke 13, 20-21 also speaks to this concept. Just as a little leaven leavens the whole lump of dough, the God in you can permeate your entire being and influence your actions. This parable encourages you to allow the divine essence within you to transform your life, character, and relationships. Finally, the parable of the hidden treasure in Matthew 13, 44, emphasizes the immense value of the kingdom of heaven, which Jesus equates to God living within us. This treasure isn't external, but within you, waiting to be discovered and cherished. These parables all serve to articulate the concept of God in you, encouraging you to recognize, nurture, and express the divine within. Chapter 22 Divine Love and Inner God Building on these enlightening parables, let's now explore the concept of divine love, an essential aspect of understanding the God within you. Divine love, as depicted in the scriptures, transcends human love. It's selfless, unconditional, and eternal, reflecting the nature of God Himself. This love isn't about feelings or emotions, but about a decision to love others as God loves us. Understanding and embracing divine love is key to recognizing the God within. For it's through this love that you can truly serve others, reflecting the inner God in your actions. It's more than just a concept. It's a way of life that transforms you and those around you. Let's delve deeper. In John 13, 35, Jesus declares, By this everyone will know that you're my disciples if you love one another. This statement underscores the power of divine love as a testament of God's presence within us. It's not just about proclaiming faith, but demonstrating it through love-infused actions. Furthermore, 1 John 4.16 states, God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God, and God in them. This profound declaration emphasizes that living in divine love is tantamount to living in God. It's no mere coincidence that the concept of divine love is one of the greatest commandments in the Bible. Chapter 23 God's Guidance from Within In your journey towards spiritual growth, you'll find that God's guidance from within emerges as a transformative force, steering you towards righteousness and aligning your actions with the essence of divine love. This isn't a passive process. Instead, it's an active collaboration between you and the divine, where you seek wisdom and discernment, and God responds by illuminating your path. When you delve into the scriptures, you'll encounter numerous instances where God's guidance is portrayed as an inner compass. For example, in Psalm 32, 8, God promises to instruct and teach in the way you should go. This indicates that the divine guidance isn't only about following a set of rules, but also about inner transformation, leading you to a life of authenticity and integrity. However, tapping into this divine guidance requires your active participation. You need to cultivate a spirit of humility and openness, acknowledging your limitations and seeking God's wisdom. Moreover, you need to develop a prayerful attitude, constantly aligning your will with God's. As you do so, you'll experience a profound change within, reflecting in your actions and conduct. You'll find yourself making decisions that aren't only beneficial to you, but also serve others, embodying the virtues of love, compassion, and service that Christ exemplified. Thus, God's guidance from within isn't an abstract concept. It's a transformative experience that shapes you, molds you, 
and prepares you for a life of service, embodying the essence of divine love in every action. Remember, God's guidance isn't a one-time event, but a lifelong journey towards spiritual maturity. Chapter 24 Inner Peace Through Divine Presence Embracing the Divine Presence within can lead to a profound sense of inner peace, a tranquility that stems not from external circumstances, but from a deep, unshakable connection with God. This peace isn't a temporary state, fleeting and dependent on life's ups and downs. Instead, it's a resilient calmness that endures, irrespective of what's happening around you. It's the peace promised in Philippians 4, 7, a peace that surpasses all understanding. The Bible encourages you to seek God's presence continually, 1 Chronicles 16, 11. It's in the quiet moments of seeking Him that you become more attuned to His voice, His guidance, His peace. This divine presence isn't something abstract or elusive. You don't have to climb a mountain or cross an ocean to find it. God is already within you, wanting to guide you, comfort you, and give you peace. But how do you tap into this divine presence? It's through constant prayer, meditation on His Word, and living a life of love and service to others. It's about cultivating a personal relationship with God, where you're not just talking to Him, but also listening, being still, and knowing that He's God. Psalm 46.10 This inner peace is more than just a personal benefit. It's a wellspring of strength that can enable you to serve others more effectively. When you're at peace with God, you're better equipped to be a peacemaker in the world, bringing comfort, reconciliation, and hope to those in need. Remember, it's in giving that you receive, and it's through serving that you truly find peace. Chapter 25. The Journey of Spiritual Discovery Your journey of spiritual discovery, often a winding path marked by introspection and moments of revelation, beckons you deeper into understanding the divine presence within. This journey isn't one of isolation, but rather a collective endeavor where your personal revelations may serve others in their quest for divine connectedness. The Bible, a veritable treasure trove of spiritual wisdom, provides a compass for this journey. It offers insights into the divine, helping you establish a personal relationship with God. It's not just about understanding the letters of the scriptures, it's about discerning the spirit behind the words. The path you tread is unique, yet echoes the experiences of biblical characters. Take, for example, the transformation of Saul to Paul on the road to Damascus, a striking example of an internal spiritual revolution. It encapsulates the essence of your journey, a shift from an outward-focused life to an inward-focused spiritual existence. This process of transformation isn't instantaneous. It's a continual cycle of revelation, introspection, and application. You're guided by the Holy Spirit, the divine presence within, aligning your actions with God-given principles and values. You're not only cultivating a relationship with God, but also manifesting His love and grace to those around you. So, in the end, you see, it's not some lofty theological conundrum. It's as clear as mud, or divine inspiration, whichever hits you first. You've got God in you, pal, according to the good old Bible. Fancy that! Spiritual journey or not, you're walking with the big guy inside, guiding, loving, providing inner peace. Don't believe it? Crack open that dusty testament and prepare for a divine surprise. Get ready to meet your inner almighty. Thanks for listening.